South China Sea today, U.S. aircraft carrier activity adds fuel to South China Sea tensions. Experts warns the Philippines not to receive wrong signals and escalate situation. A U.S. aircraft carrier has reportedly entered the South China Sea in a move experts said on Wednesday, sends a wrong signal to the Philippines amid the Southeast Asian country's repeated provocations on Chinese islands and reefs in the region. The U.S. Navy Carl Vincent Carrier Strike Group departed Singapore following a port visit there and is now in the South China Sea, USNI News, the news service of the U.S. Naval Institute, reported earlier this week. The Carrier Strike Group is one of the few extra-regional naval forces currently operating in Southeast Asia over the Christmas period with other navies having all wrapped up their deployments, USNI News said. By keeping an aircraft carrier sailing in the South China Sea during the Christmas period, the U.S. wants to maintain the South China Sea issue as a hot topic and retain its military presence in the region, Wei Dongsu, a Beijing-based military expert, told the Global Times on Wednesday. Such show of military force in sensitive waters amid tensions goes in the opposite direction of peace and stability in the South China Sea," Wei said. Chen Xiang Mio, director of the World Navy Research Center at the National Institute for South China Sea Studies, told the Global Times on Wednesday that U.S. aircraft carrier activity in the South China Sea is nothing new, as such moves usually attempt to deter China and show support to U.S. allies, so the U.S. can consolidate its hegemony. The U.S. carrier's entry into the South China Sea this time is adding fuel to the persistent tensions between China and the Philippines in the region, and sends a wrong signal to the Philippines that could incite Manila to take more extreme moves that escalate contradictions with China," Chen said. Since August, the Philippines has repeatedly sent vessels to illegally trespass into waters off Chinese islands and reefs in the South China Sea and saw its attempts restricted by the China Coast Guard. One of the focuses of the Philippine provocations is Rena Jiao, also known as Rena Reef, as the Philippines made several attempts to send building materials to reinforce an old warship illegally grounded there. Midil Aguilar, a Philippine military spokesperson, on Tuesday, accused China of carrying out dangerous maneuvers and committing all the violations, and claimed that the Philippines is not provoking conflict in the South China Sea, Reuters reported on Tuesday. In response, Mao Ning, a spokesperson at China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said at a regular press conference on Tuesday that the recent developments involving China and the Philippines in the South China Sea are caused by the Philippines' change of policy and position, refusing to honor its commitments, violating international law and the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea, and deliberate infringement of China's sovereignty and provocations, and the responsibility lies with the Philippines. China will resolutely protect its territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests," Mao said, noting that we hope that the Philippines will make the wise choice, return to the right track of properly handling disputes through dialogue and consultation, and work with China to properly handle and manage the situation at sea. Mao's remarks are a stern warning with clear formulation, 
And if the Philippines insists on serving as a pawn of the U.S. in making provocations in the South China Sea, it is essentially lifting a rock only to drop it on its own feet. Wei said, the Philippines is making a strategic misjudgment as it underestimates China's determination to safeguard its rights as well as stability in the South China Sea and wrongly believes that the U.S. has the capability of containing China, Chen said. Multiple military experts told the Global Times that the U.S. Navy used to hold provocative, large-scale carrier exercises in the South China Sea, but this has changed in recent years. While U.S. carriers still operate in the South China Sea, they tend not to stay in the region for too long at a time because the U.S. Navy understands the Chinese military's capabilities in targeting large moving warships on its doorstep, which significantly reduces the survivability of aircraft carriers. Experts said, noting that U.S. carrier activities in the South China Sea now serve more as a political and diplomatic tool than actual military instruments. Experts urged the Philippines to make independent decisions that really fit its national interests and not to rely on the U.S., which only sees it as a pawn. On other media, China wants to modernize and bolster its navy. It's expanding its aircraft carrier fleet by building two nuclear-powered vessels, not only as a deterrent, but also to displace the U.S. military presence. Fears are on the rise over a looming military conflict in the Taiwan Strait. The People's Republic of China wants reunification with self-ruled Taiwan, which Beijing sees as a Chinese province, even by force, if necessary. Presenting his government's work report to the National People's Congress NPC, China's rubber stamp parliament, Premier Li Qiang reaffirmed Beijing's firm resolve to resolutely advance the cause of China's reunification. This is part of the government's overall strategy, he emphasized. The statement itself is not new, but the word peaceful a term that was present in the declarations of previous years was missing before reunification. From Beijing's standpoint, the source of the security threat in the region lies in the fact that the Republic of China, as Taiwan officially calls itself, receives security guarantees from the U.S. Five U.S. aircraft carriers are currently deployed to the Pacific region, according to U.S. media reports. Chinese politicians are increasingly referring to peace and security on both shores, a phrase which many experts believe is no longer just about the Taiwan Strait, but refers to the Pacific Ocean as a whole. How China may allocate its planned defense increase of 7.2%. To control the contested waters, Beijing has been trying to bolster its still relatively weak navy. The southernmost point in the South China Sea is located around 2,000 kilometers, 1,242 miles, from the Chinese mainland, and Beijing is striving to maintain and strengthen its naval presence in the region with the help of its aircraft carriers. 